by the sound of a mighty rushing wind and it's closer now than it's ever been I can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds a call and at the midnight cry we'll be going home when Jesus steps is fulfilling and signs of the times they're appearing everywhere I can almost hear the fathers he says son go get your children the midnight cry the bride of Christ shall rise when Jesus stands on on a cloud to call his children the dead in Christ shall rise And good morning, dear viewers and listeners, and welcome to this, the January edition of the Midnight Cry. And I'm just so glad to be with you at this time of liberation for the people of God. And really, the theme of this program, the Midnight Cry, is all about the times we're living in, because this is a wake-up call, a wake-up call to the church, and a wake-up call. And I'm talking here about the worldwide church, because Jesus is coming soon. 
a wake up call to individual believers and a wake up call to those who are going to turn to Jesus before he comes again because he's coming soon. Let's read first of all from what Paul says in the epistle to the Romans. He's talking here to believers who are living in Rome at times of great persecution. And he's basically telling them to look at the signs of the times, to obey the commandments, and really how to live their everyday life. Okay, this is Romans 13. Starting with verse 8. Oh, no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Just to take you back a moment to when Jesus was ministering and living on earth. And he was asked one time by a scribe, I think it was, or a lawyer. He was asked, Lord, what are the greatest commandments? What do you think are the most important? And he said, Basically, he said, the love commandments. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, all thy soul, all thy strength, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And he said, on these commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Well, this is what Paul's saying here. He goes on, for this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt, shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And he's talking here about the God kind of love, agape love, the love that will give as life, which makes someone give their lives for another, which is what Jesus himself did. Now he goes on in verse 11, and this is important. This is what this program is all about. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the last thereof. He's saying, and this is what we need to hear, all of us. Basically he's saying, stop messing about. Stop living according to the flesh. Put on Jesus Christ because the old man has died when you first believe, when you give your life to Jesus. Let him Fill all of your life. That's what he's saying. Because the time is short before Jesus comes again. And you know, it can be hard living that life that Jesus has called us to live in the physical sense. But I can witness personally to, the, to you today that you're so blessed in every other way. If you just get up in the morning... <laughs> I did this last week, actually, when I was in North Wales. I had to go down on some business to see solicitors to do with a will and to see uh, an accountant. Um, it wasn't all easy. But if you actually say at the beginning of the day, Lord, I give this day to you. You just do with me what you want. And work through me today. Everything goes so well. And you have that peace that peace of God that passes all understanding. It's not like a, a thing that you can describe in human terms. And it's like the words of this song called The Haven of Rest. Because he is our peace. My soul in sad exile was out on life's sea. 
so burdened with sin and distress till I heard a sweet voice saying make me your choice and I entered the heaven of rest I've anchored my soul in Jesus I'm safe evermore I yielded myself to his tender embrace and faith taking hold of the world my fetters fell off and I my soul the even of rest is my Lord I've anchored my soul in the haven of rest I'll sail the white seas no more the tempest Jesus, I'm safe evermore. I've anchored my soul in the haven of rest. I'll sail the white seas no more. The tempest Jesus, it's really true. You know, that's a wonderful song, especially for people who understand what it's like to go to sea in dangerous situations, the physical sea, like fishermen and sailors of all sorts so often do. And, you know, that is such a wonderful thing to know that we have an anchor. And that's a famous hymn, actually, in its own right, the hymn of the Boys Brigade. Some of you might know it. An anchor that keeps the soul. And it's, it's so wonderful. And you know, in these days of turmoil all over the world, and wars and rumors of wars, as it talks about, Jesus actually prophesied that in the end times, and we're living in the end times before he comes again, there would be wars and rumors of wars, famines and earthquakes and all sorts of terrible things all over the world. And that was the beginning of sorrows. But it's so wonderful to know that he is our haven of rest. And we need to trust in him, you know. Like Peter, Jesus' fisherman disciple. Great man in many ways. But, you know, like all the rest of us, he had his weaknesses. Until the day of Pentecost when he suddenly be filled with the Holy Ghost and power and strength and was no longer afraid. But one time, Jesus came to his disciples who were in a boat on the Sea of Galilee and he came to them walking on the water, supernaturally walking on the water, having the power over the wind and the waves and the forces of nature. And Peter <laughs> said, Lord, bid me come to you. I'll come and walk on the water to you and meet you, basically. 
and he set off and he actually, when he was looking to Jesus and not the circumstances and not the wind and the waves and all the scary stuff about drowning, when he was walking to Jesus on the water, it was great till he stopped looking to Jesus and looked down. Oh, look at that. And he's terrified and he starts to sink and the Lord saved him from drowning. But he said, oh, ye of little faith. You see, when we look to him, we don't worry about the wind and the waves of our circumstances and our lives. He keeps us high above all that. But we only have to believe. And we need to keep walking in faith and not by sight, but having faith in God. And he believe, believe, only believe. The words of Smith Wigglesworth, the famous Apostle of faith and healing evangelist. Only believe. And the wind and the waves don't matter. And Paul himself, the apostle, said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, who strengtheneth me. And we need to keep walking by faith and not by sight. And we will endure all our troubles and everything else that comes against us to the end. Because a wonderful song, which I'm going to sing now, um, it just was written by Dottie Rambo. And she herself had tremendous troubles and trials, even in, within her own family, with her own husband and outside her life as well. And one time she was desperate. She was nearly giving up. And then the words of this song came to her. Too much to gain, to lose. Too many miles behind me. Too many trials are through. Too Too much to gain, to lose. Too many sunsets lie behind the mountains. Too many rivers my feet have walked through. Too many treasures. To gain, to lose I've crossed the hot burning desert I was struggling the right road to choose And defeat is one word I never lose, nor use either. <laughs> Too many sunsets lie behind the mountains. Too many rivers my feet have walked through. Too many treasures. There's too much to gain, to lose. Too many treasures are waiting over yonder. And there's too much to gain, to lose. that a wonderful song dear viewers and listeners you know 
so often, and I'm talking particularly to believers here, so often it all seems to get too much. Life seems to be too hard. There are too many troubles in your family, in the home, and outside the home, at work, and everything, you know, seems to be going wrong. But that is the very time when we mustn't give up. So many times we've experienced it that just at the very point where we feel it's all too much and we're thinking we're tempted to give up. That is the time when you get breakthrough. If you only believe, it's true honestly, because I wouldn't tell you this if I hadn't got testimony of this in my own life and the life of those around me. It really is too much to gain to lose. And Jesus said, you know, when people say all manner of things against you for my sake, rejoice and be glad, for they persecuted, so persecuted they the prophets that were before. You know, and also taking it worldwide, looking at all the countries in the world where there's been terrible persecution, like China and Korea, North Korea and the Middle East and, and parts of Africa and so on. You know, out of persecution comes growth. The early church that we read about in the book of Acts, the Romans gave them absolute hell. And sometimes so did the Jews, the scribes and the Pharisees. You know, they had all sorts happen to them. If you read in, but my favorite book, and I haven't time to read the whole lot to you, but I'd love to read you some of this, is Hebrews. It's called the Book of Faith. And in Hebrews 11, it talks about these things, about the sufferings that people have gone through. But they've always, like Peter when he was beginning to walk on the water, and like Jesus, they've always kept their eyes above the circumstances by faith. And I just want to read you a couple of sections of that right now. Now, faith, in Hebrews chapter 11, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Those of you who listened to the morning service and, and the other things that were on just about a couple of hours ago, where David was talking about this, that faith is actually the evidence of things not seen. And by faith, you know, through faith, we understand all these things. Through faith, we believe that the world was made, as it says in verse 3 here, by the word of God, that Jesus, that God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, were all there at the beginning in the book of Genesis. God said in his word, let there be light. That was from his word. And it was light. And all these things happened. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, because by which he had obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it be he being dead yet speaketh. Now there are lots of other examples of faith given this wonderful chapter. Really, I really recommend that you read it. But without faith, this is very important, verse 6, without faith... It is impossible to please him, that's to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those that them that diligently seek him. That means if you seek him with all of your heart and keep going on despite all the problems and apparent opposition, keep going, keep going. He is a rewarder. Without faith, you see, I, get, I am so sad when I speak to people. And even some of them are believers who would say they're born-again Christians and churchgoers and all this. And they don't speak by faith. They constantly moan and groan. They don't believe. You know, if it, it, he is our healer. If you go to God, you know, and he, he will heal you. Body, he already, when we're born again, he heals our spirits. But also our souls, our minds, will, and emotions, and our bodies. If we ask him, if we believe, he heals us. It's so sad when you hear all this no hope stuff coming from people's mouths because they don't understand. Often they haven't been taught. Now, if you look at what they have to, people have gone through in the past, 
Look at this. Further on in the chapter. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and of David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. Think of Daniel. And how God stopped the lion's mouths, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong. So important. Waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. And that can still happen today and does still happen. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. Now, we live in the land of the covenanters here, all of the, which so many martyrs suffered for their faith, even more recent times, not just in the time of the Bible, but even just one or two hundred years ago, and even now. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us. See, those people he's talking about were even before the coming of Jesus, even before the fulfillment of God's promise that he would send his only begotten son to die for us, the Lamb of God. Even before that, people were prepared to endure terrible afflictions by faith. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. So, you see, Jesus, the fulfillment of the promise, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world, he is our peace who's broken down every wall of division. He is our Savior, our Healer, our Baptizer in the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, our soon coming King. And so, what is being said in Hebrews 11 at the end? The old rugged cross made the difference. With aimless desperation Without hope Walk the shell of a man Then a hand with a nail print Stretched downward Just one touch then a new life began And the old oh, rugged oh, cross made, made a difference, difference. In, In a life bound for heartache and defeat Oh 
with whom Dad has wrapped them in gloom. But at the side of a saint, there's rejoicing for life and peace. The old rugged cross is the answer. Changes lives today because Jesus died for us and shed his blood on the cross and rose again on the third day and lives forever beside in heaven, beside the Father. Hallelujah. And he sent the Holy Spirit to dwell with us. Because of that, that makes all the difference. That changes lives today. Only believe. It totally changes lives. And I thank you, Lord. I pray not only for those who have watched and listened to this uh, Midnight Cry program today live. Those who will listen and watch it as well, Lord. And that the Holy Ghost will move upon everyone, Lord, who has watched and listened this to this, Lord, and it will it is going out on the airwaves now as well, supernaturally, Lord, in supernatural power to change people's lives, to change the whole spiritual atmosphere in Whithorn and to the ends of the earth. For your command is, Lord, that we preach the gospel, <sighs> Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And I thank you that you are the God, a supernatural God, a God that changes not. And that, in Hebrews 12, it says, verse 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, those who've gone before us are in heaven now, cheering us on. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sat, set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. And God bless you. See you in the next program. <laughs>